Welcome to Home Renovation, YouTube channel designed to help homeowners do renovations at your home and get professional results. Today we're talking about installing pre-hung doors. That's right, we got three different ways to do it. Stay with us, we're gonna show you all of our tips and tricks. All right, well, before we get started today, if you're new to our channel, then I would encourage you and invite you to subscribe to the channel. Hit the button in the corner, and don't forget to hit the notifications bell. It's very important, otherwise you aren't gonna know that we got new videos out until it's way too late. Okay, so we will get right into it. Today we are talking interior doors. In all my years in renovations, I have seen a ton of different techniques. Some of them work, some of them don't. But there are three out there specifically that are great for DIY homeowners because you get a good result in all three different instances. So there are three techniques that I'm gonna show you today. The strongest, the easiest, and then the cheapest, okay? So we're gonna start with the strongest door because this is like bread and butter door hanging, okay? If it's solid core or hollow core, it won't make a difference. This technique will hold your weight. And it's basically old school, right? We're using a level to plumb the frame. We're using a square to make sure everything is nice. We're using wood shims, we're using long screws, basic, typical kind of construction stuff, right? All right, so what we wanna do to get started is take our pre-hung door apart. All righty, now what do we got here? Oh, we got a new system holding this on. There you go. Now leave it up to manufacturers to be forever inventing new and stupid ways to try to put these plugs in. There we go. And then you have to pop your pins. There we go. Okay. Let's get rid of our slab for now. We'll get back to that in a minute. Just because the door is pre-hung doesn't mean you want to leave it on the door frame while you're working. Yeah, not a lot of mercy here. Okay. So. Let's just talk doors real quick because you want to have an idea of what's going on. This is a 30 inch hole, rough opening, wood to wood. So we got a 28 inch door. Traditionally jams are five eighths thick, which gives you three eighths of an inch, which is just a few millimeters of mercy if it's not level or plumb. So what we do, put this up against the frame with your nice long five, six foot level. And now, <laughs> I have to almost go all the way over to the other side in order to get that plumb. That's just great. So now we want to check over here, see what's the condition of the door if I... Wow. Now, if you're building for yourself, leave yourself the full two inches. Don't cheat. Inevitably, this is what happens. So now I'm over here, tied up against the wall. We, we know that from that corner to the top of this, I have to pull, I'm twisted in the frame now. And this has just enough room that I'm gonna have just a hair to pull the jam off the wall at the bottom. Whew, we're lucky, that was close. If it doesn't fit the hole, you've gotta take your slab, grab your portable planer, you gotta resize the door to fit the hole that you're stuck with. So make sure you frame your holes big enough. Fortunately on this job, we kind of picked up to clean up somebody else's mess halfway through. <sighs> Not my favorite way to work, but it's a great learning opportunity. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do in this situation is we now know that our door will fit. It will be plumb and there is enough room. But you also want to make sure that you're level at the bottom. Now, if you have a shorter level, it could be beneficial here. Let's check and see what we're looking at. This is sinking on this side. All right, so what that means is we're gonna take a shim and we're gonna prop this one up. <laughs> Why am I talking about it? Let's just show it. I'm in the hole relatively square and I'm just getting started, right? And I know that this is really low. And if this is low, that means this is not gonna be square. So if I put my, all right, I, I can lift and it's square at about a quarter inch up. So we're gonna just drop this on the ground. And we're gonna use this to space it until I am really freaking happy. <laughs> all right, so there's now I got my spacer. Because we're in here all twisted, I need 14 hands again. Ah, I 
keep it in place. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this guys. So feel free if you have a door where you can take the interior door jam off. This is the door stop, okay? And it usually comes separate. There are models out there, I think Masonite makes a door, the door stop is molded into it and you can't remove it. So what I'm doing is I'm just using three inch screw and I'm just starting off flush with the front edge. And I'm gonna just lift this door just like 30 seconds of an inch off the ground. Just so it doesn't have direct contact with the concrete. Now I have no reason to assume that this is gonna be frame plumb. <laughs> no, it's not. If you take shims from two different directions and you pinch them together in the middle of a door, like this, then you're gonna get a nice square door. If you only come at it from one side, you'll twist the frame. All right, so very important wherever you can, come at it from two different directions. All right, throw your, layer, your level. Now this is funny because the levels are usually made so that they fit between the door stop and the hinge pin. All right, and you can actually traverse all three hinges. Check your level. Well, that was a hell of a guess. <laughs> all right, there we go. Now here's the funny part. Push in a little bit more on the, on the shim before you do this. And I'm setting my screw just behind the trim. All right, and the idea here behind why this is so high up, it's because it's comfortable, I'm getting old. So this is where I'm standing, right? I mean, this is not rocket science. I do want to get a shim pack near the top just to help stabilize this because what happens over time is if areas like this aren't taken care of really nice and tight, then they'll move around. And that's where your door will end up jamming up. So we're gonna just make sure, nice and tight. Beautiful. Driving our last screw on this side. Hello. Wanna watch out for spinning shims, okay? It's actually pretty dangerous. Now there's just a couple of goals you wanna get here. You wanna get your jam flush with your wall. Okay, across the top as well, and at the bottom, and you want to get this plumb. You can check your work with your square, and it should be pretty dang perfect. Just a little warning here. This is actually dangerous. I have a nice scar on my hand from doing this one day. Yeah, I cut the shim, and I held it like this, and I snapped the shim. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> right through my hand. That was interesting at the hospital. So I drove by, grabbed myself a coffee at the, at the coffee shop on the way to the hospital. Cause you know, in Canada, you're gonna be sitting there for a while. We don't have no hospital with a sign outside saying guaranteed five minute wait time. For us, it can be three to five hours. But thank God it's free. <laughs> I guess that's our consolation prize, eh? All right, anyway, I get to the hospital and they had uh, paramedics there doing triage, uh, you know, kids from school. And because I used my electrical tape to close up the wound, I was able to walk up and undo the electrical tape and open up my hand and they got to see the inside of my hand. Another good reason to use electrical tape because they always want to diagnose the problem before they put you into a waiting room to get treatment. I was able to take my tape and just wrap it all back up again to keep it from bleeding. Beautiful. Here we go, eh? Now, this is where this gets interesting. Now that you've got the hinge side of the door established, it's plumb, it's flush, it's square, everything's good. You hang the door again, and then you just fish, adjust this side to make everything fit. So even if you're a little bit out of square, a little bit out of plumb, once this is established, you hang the door, you can move this around to do whatever you need to do to make your door look pretty. And that is the best DIY technique you can get. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna hang my door and then put my pins back in. <laughs> Do -do -do. Your pins will go in relatively easy. And if it's not, you'll know because you won't be able to get your pins in. There we go. Now, all we do is close the door and see how she fits.
do, do, do. And I'm looking for flush, right? When I close the door, I want it to hit the top and the bottom together. And it looks like this corner of the building is twisted. So we're happy with the gap at the top. And because I'm going to be manipulating the door frame at the top afterwards, here's the secret, guys. If your stuff isn't nice and level, you can always take your knife, cut back some of your drywall. That's going to be protruding, okay? And you can actually trim it out like such. Okay? So then when you put your casing on, it's not so aggressively raised up as a bump. All right? So you can actually put your case in there, trace your line, cut your drywall back a little bit, then nail your casing on, and you can fake that it was flush. Sometimes it's just not going to play ball. And you can spend all day long adjusting everything about your house so that it works perfectly. Or you can just learn how to do things like this. So you can adjust things on the fly and get on with your life. Remember, the goal of doing renovations at home is not to spend your entire life fixing your house. It's about getting it done and then enjoying the rest of your weekend. I think three is going to be good. The frame's a little twisted, so I'm going to do two from this side. There we go. That's better. Okay. Yep, too thick. Now, this is the advantage of having the door already sitting there. We're going to put it in place. Check the gap. Okay, you should have a little bit of gap here. If there's not very much, you might run into trouble down the road, especially being in the basement. So feel free to give yourself a little bit of extra space. There we go. But make sure the door stop closes the gap. You want to have privacy when you're in the bathroom, after all. And someday down the road, they're going to spend some money and get the rest of this renovation done. And this space will be a bathroom. Just not today. One from each side again. And I like to put these close to the latch set. All right, just so that you get a nice solid feel when you're closing the door. Hey, now we got something we're talking about. Okay. Now, don't forget, your wood you're working with is never going to be square, never going to be straight. Things twist, twist and bend. See, a little bit of pressure here, and I got a bow now. If I don't have this here at all, it's actually already bowed. So what I want to do is find out where it's snug. This is how you get rid of a bow in a door. Now, pull your shims back and then push. There we go. Yeah, now she's straight. Okay. Here we are. The reason I'm putting the screws in behind the doorstop is because visually, when the door's closed, you can't see the repair. This is nice and clean and open, nothing on the surface, paints really well. And this is like an MDF with a primer on it. So that's where I like to hide them back there. If you like and you have the opportunity, take the stops off, that's great too. It's just a whole lot of extra work. And if you're working in your basement and you're putting up eight or nine doors, Having a way to get this done and get on with your day is not a bad plan. Instead of trying to break them off, feel free to just cut them off. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. There we go. That wasn't too bad. That was pretty quick. Now that's the strongest door system. And the reason we call it the strongest is because we are using construction screws. Look at that. That's a nice gap. I got three of them on each side. And that gives me 500 pounds of shear strength. So when this door is closed, it's going to take a whole lot of energy to kick that sucker in. Which really shouldn't be your first goal in a basement. But if you like to build things that stay put, that's a great way to do it. Now, the next way we're going to do it is going to be the simplest way to do it. <laughs> You'll be able to see the difference. All right, door number two, we're going to do the quick and easy way. And this costs a few bucks, I'm going to warn you. Uh, both of the major hardware stores had a version of a similar system. The idea is just a metal bracket, you screw it to the door, you screw it to the wall, you hang it, boom, you're done. Not quite as simple as you'd like to think, but 
for 13 bucks, if you don't want to get involved, and if you're working alone and you're not familiar with hanging a door, it can be really quite frustrating. This may not be a bad investment. I have never used this system before in my life, but I had a, another door video on our site. I was going through the process and somebody said, hey, why don't you buy the clip system? So much easier. So I decided to buy the clip system and try this out. In theory, looks really quick and simple. And I love the concept, but hey, <laughs> we're gonna see if it's as easy as the package suggests. All right, so same process. I don't care what system you're using to hang a door, you need to know if your floor is level because you're building off the floor. I already checked and it is fine. And in this system, I got two different kinds of nails or screws, sorry. Lovely. Oh, look at that coarse thread drywall screw. That's what we're hanging the door with. Better than the fine thread, I guess. Eh? So this is going to take a minute. We've got a lot of screws to install here. I didn't say this is the fastest, just the easiest. So the way we do this, let's get the door turned around. All right. And we're going to attach one of these brackets. Yeah, let's uh, get, make sure she's going to play ball. We're going to put it here. Let me just show you the bracket. Boom, boom, boom. So it's got these little teeth, okay? And it's got an adjustable screw here, and it's got this plate here. The idea is you screw it to the jam in these three holes here, okay? And then you put a screw through the surface into the wall that you're attaching the door to, and then the casing will cover all of this hardware. Seems pretty simple in theory. So let's get this on. I'm going to suggest that you install these at each hinge and the corresponding on the other side. So that means there's 24 screws that you have to install to put a door up. Hmm. <laughs> now this might be easy to do by yourself, but I don't know if it's going to be necessarily the fastest, that's for sure. You really want to make sure you put your screw on the furthest part of the hole before you start so you don't accidentally stick these tabs out because that's going to interfere with your casing and it's ultimately ultimately going to affect the finished look. Number 13, 14, and 15 screws. And I need a third hand again because they're a Phillips screw, which is lovely. It's so easy to work with Phillips screws. They always want to stay on the drill bit. Ah, <sighs> after a solid half an hour of screwing the clips on, we're ready to go. <laughs> Here we are. Now, again, I put a shim on my hinge side. You've got to be kidding me. <sighs> so what happened? Well, whoever framed this house needs to get uh, some mild correction. People in the comment section tell me, don't complain about what other people do, but then they do things like this and you want to just hit them like this. Yeah. If you make the hole the same width, bottom, middle, and top, you will have success hanging doors. All right, I think this might actually fit the hole now. Let's give this a shot again for the first time. There is one thing we're missing. It's one thing I did in my brilliance is I forgot that since I'm installing this, I wanted to put the pins on the hinge side, okay? Um, so that I'm attached where the, the hinge is attached to the jam, not on the other side of the jam, can cause things to warp over time. But I'm in an unfinished room, so I actually have to add the thickness of a sheet of drywall here because the door jam is cut for the, the width of a finished wall, not an unfinished wall. So 
So if I don't install this first, I'm in a whole heap of trouble. I'm starting to think that these clips make it really easy, but only if you're in a finished space. <laughs> that if I did my regular um, shims and six screws here, I would have been done already. <laughs> okay, attach all 18 of these screws on the interior of the door where the hinges are and straight across. Put them into a hole, hinge side on a shim. And that'll guarantee you a little bit of flexibility to close the gap. Okay? You wanna just slide your door by the hinge here, left and right, okay? Check, check your gap, cross the top of the door. If you don't like the gap, pull the bottom away from the, the wall if you can, if you got some room. That looks pretty good. I'm liking that. I'm thinking we can install the door there. This looks like an inch and a, an inch and a half screw almost. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this nice and tight. And because there's force to go that way, I'm gonna put the screw on the outside of that gap. Okay. Whew. Now when I check this and I line it up, my gap is bigger here. I'm gonna close this gap by rotating the door. I'm sending the bottom side over here on the hinge. I'm gonna send it over. And the more I close it, see that? The more I send it to the bottom, the higher that goes. It's like rotating on that one screw. So, yeah. And in the same way, because of the weight of the doors on the pins, this side is gonna be pushing this way. So I'm gonna set the screw on the inside of the slot once I get that gap established. All right. So to make my life easy, let's put that screw right in the middle. Then I can get up here and confirm my gap. I like it. I'm gonna put another screw on the inside and make sure it won't ever be able to slip. <laughs> all right. Now I'm all set up. It's just a matter of finishing off the last few screws. I'm gonna put my thumb on the jet. You see, I'm gonna, I got the ability to open that up just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. Same down here. And that opens up a nice little gap. Okay. Nice and flush. All right. Okay, so that was rather effortless. It doesn't require a lot of strength. It didn't require a lot of knowledge of carpentry. Just took a little bit of understanding. We've got to be on a finished surface. A lot of screws. Relatively easy installation. You know, not a bad product for a DIY or no. Listen, that took longer than the first door. That one also costs about 10 or $12 for the hardware. Keep that in mind, all right? I think it might be worth it to learn how to use the construction screws and shim. All right, this is method number three. This is what I call the cheapest. Because no matter what you do when you install a door, when you're finished, you have to use brad nails to put on all your casing. What if you could install the door completely with just brad nails? And you can, but there's a couple things you need to know. First, make sure that you have enough room for full pieces of trim all the way around your door. This technique only works if you have enough height to put on your casing before the ceiling and room on each side for the casing as well because you can't custom scribe your casing and then install your door. That's just ridiculous, it's totally backwards. But if you have lots of room like we do here because we bought 78 inch tall doors, just a tip, but if you have working in a basement and you're working underneath structural beams and ductwork, in a lot of cases, if you buy the 78 inch door instead of the 80, it'll give you room to make, give the appearance of a full size door and you won't have to be cutting all of your trims down. Save you a ton of work, gives you a cleaner look as well. And it gives you the ability to install your door this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our compressor and our chop saw. 
We've already checked our door. We have lots of space. Everything is going to be fine. We are going to add the trim to the face of the door jamb first, and then we're going to lift it up, stick it in place, throw 20 nails in that sucker, and call it a day. So we cut our casing, and now we're going to throw some nails in it. Of course, we're using two inch nails. You just throw a couple in the bottom here. Set it up with a bit of a gap so you can caulk and paint later. Make it all pretty. Okay. Do do do. Secret is to get to the other end of the door without stepping on it. <laughs> all right. So now we got our casing attached. Um, the jams are still gonna be moving around, so don't nail your corner shut. Give that some flexibility. Of course, I took that little locking pin out of the door handle area. We're gonna just drag this into position. <laughs> yep, this looks a little awkward, but it's not that bad. Okay. Now the door will want to fall in, but the casing is going to keep her from doing that. Now what we want to do is just get our level, put it on the hinge side, right? And make sure that the door can open and close. Plenty of space. I like the gap across the top. I like all of this. So what we're doing here is we're going to just start pushed up on the bottom against the framing of the door, okay? There we go. Now, you can see I've got some room to manipulate here. What I want to do is put my level here. Check for plumb. I'm not plumb. Go all the way. Uh, it's a little too extreme. So what I know is that the bottom is going to be in that position. So, let's get the jam on. Couple in the casing couple in the jam, now the bottom is fixed. Now, I can sit here, set my gun, and just relax until it's in the perfect spot. I like it. <laughs> and I'm putting all my nail line right where the door stop is, because I can come by later with a, with a caulking gun. I can do one bead of caulking and fill in all those little dents right where my groove is going to be. Okay, so now all we do is come over to this side, check for functionality. So now, I, again, I'm in the same place. I have lots of flexibility here. Okay, up, down, moving around. Um, I'm just checking my gap across the top. I'm good with that. I can close the door. I don't see any light. So I get this nice and square, and then I can just manipulate everything here until it all closes nice, and I'm not getting any rubbing. I'm going to pull this shut a little bit here. There, that's a nice gap all the way around. Now, I have a gap from here to my frame. And since I'm running my nails here, I'm going to use my left hand. Ooh, so scary. And I'm going to hold the jam material in place on the left side, knowing that this is all nailed on the right side to keep everything from twisting. Pretty solid. That door's not going anywhere. Loving it. <laughs> We're probably going to need a little bit of caulking just to clean up some of these cuts, but let's be honest. Um, I know a lot of carpenters are out there that if they got a joint like that with cheap MDF materials, they'd be just happy with it knowing they're going to caulk it. So, as a DIYer, whew, ooh, we got a bit of rub. Let's fix that. Did it do? <laughs> Perfect. This is a great way to maintain a door system. If anything ever moves or pulls around on you over time, you can always just give it a little kick, throw a couple more nails in it. You're good to go. Now, that covers all three systems. The cheapest turned out to be the most tedious. But if you're comfortable with using a miter saw and measuring it and slapping them together like this and your hole is the right size, this is also pretty quick. What I would suggest is if you're a door slammer type family, 
This is not a good system for you unless you've got casing on both sides. Um, but since it's just going into an empty room where we have the furnace, really all we need here is something that we can paint and close off our gap so visually we can't see the furnace room. So that works great. My favorite, of course, is always shims and screws. <sighs> Let's just review. I'm not a fan of the clips. I thought it was just a whole lot of screws. And at the end of the day, it took more effort to install all those plates and get it all squared off than just doing it the original way with the ships. So three ways you get to pick, I think, those screw plate system, it would work if you're really not comfortable with tools. All you need to know is know how to use a drill and the rest of it, you can just feel your way through it. So it's probably not a bad DIY project if you don't have a lot of comfort with it. But uh, let's just say old fashioned still rules. This will work. Not a big fan. I don't do, do this do kind of door very often at all. But for the purpose of the video, I just thought I'd throw uh, three different options at you. So you can pick strongest, the easiest and the cheapest. The cheapest actually ended up being the fastest, <laughs> but the speed is not really the point here. It's all about getting a good result. Remember, our goal here is to help you as a homeowner get a professional looking result. This is an installation that's happening in new build construction all over our country. So don't send us a comment saying, using the Brad nailer is not professional, because I know a lot of guys getting paid to install that kind of door. Um, that's it for this video. So hopefully we've got all your questions answered. You're going to be more comfortable installing doors. You got some options and systems in your toolbox now. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the section below. Yes, I'm still answering them every single day. And don't forget to check out our Amazon link to buy all the tools that you're going to need to do these jobs. All right? Like if I haven't already told you a thousand times, like and subscribe to the channel. All right? We're having a lot of fun. We're growing fast. I want to say thanks to everybody out there who's contributing to that because it's, uh, it's really enjoying this. Max and I are having a lot of fun making this channel for you. We're glad to be of help. So keep on supporting us and we'll be there to help you out too. See you later. Click the video to see how this project turned out.